American Heart Month is February, of course, so we're wearing red and spreading awareness in an effort to raise communication and education so that we could put an end to heart disease once and for all. And joining me today at University Hospitals is Dr., and I hope I'm saying this correctly, Rajagopalan. Rajagopalan. Nice to meet you. Great and to meet you, Holly. We have so much that has advanced over the years over the months and I feel like every day we're learning more and more. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the calcium scoring test. What is that? Coronary calcium scoring has been around for more than 20 years, Holly, and it's probably one of the best tests that we have to predict risk. In other words, risk for a future cardiovascular event, uh, in particular the risk for a heart attack or dying in the future. Okay. One of the questions that you might be thinking about at home, who's a good candidate for this test? Is it somebody with a family history? Is it anybody? No, I think that's a great question. I think over the years we've really tried to work on surrogates or testing that might help identify those patients at risk for future cardiovascular events. So those would include patients with risk factors, mm -hmm. people with high cholesterol, people with high blood pressure, people with diabetes or pre-diabetes, even mm -hmm. people with a very strong family history. Okay. Obviously not everybody with risk factors has an event and that's one of the problems with the current scenario. Just because you might have slightly higher blood pressure might not necessarily mean that you might be at risk for future cardiovascular event. It is a very important risk factor sure. for having an event, but just having high blood pressure doesn't mean that you'll succumb of a heart attack. So we need better tests to be able to predict more accurately. Even in those patients who have risk factors, who amongst those patients are at particularly high risk for future events so that sure. we can then appropriately risk manage them, put them in appropriate treatments that would lower their risk in the future. It's amazing that that technology is even there to begin with. Yes. So explain the process. Yeah. How, does, how does the test work? Mm -hmm. um, the process, getting an appointment, is it easy? Is it? Oh, it's very easy. First of all, the test is simply a glorified x-ray. Oh, it's done so in a CT not scanner, <laughs> not at all. It, it doesn't require IVs, it doesn't require injections. The entire test literally takes less than two minutes once you're on the scanner. So it's a very, very simple test. And as I said, it essentially measures radiographically the deposition of calcium in your arteries. Okay. So amongst all the tests that we have and almost all of the tests that we do as physicians and cardiologists and internists is to is to identify circulating factors, blood tests for instance, that are surrogate markers. So when I say surrogates, they're not the real, um, they're not real disease, but these are markers that help you identify patient at risk. On the other hand, coronary calcium score is actually, you're actually determining radiographically through a CT scan whether or not there is deposition of calcium in your coronary arteries. Okay. And the deposition of calcium in coronary arteries is actual disease. So you're actually imaging coronary artery disease. And that's a very unique difference, you know, from just having risk factors that are surrogates from actual disease. So the presence of calcium in your coronary arteries actually tells you that you have coronary artery disease. Now that's a big, that's huge, big difference. Isn't it? So knowing armed with that information, you know, physicians would be able to say, okay, we actually have evidence of disease in your arteries. So sure. we have actual target organ damage. That's vital for That's you to know. That's vital for you to know so that you can change, you know, your lifestyle, your diet, your exercise. And as physicians, we can actually put you on therapies that be no work in terms of reducing future cardiovascular events. Well, and that's the best news of all. And that's right. I can't thank you enough for all you do. And of course, for more information, you can visit goredforwomen.org. Doctor, thank you. Thank you very much, Holly.